Hey everybody. Uh, so this week I wanted to go through an important topic in chemical science or chemistry. So I have a client who is working through different physiology things and I want him to understand intermolecular forces because these are very, very dominant in all sorts of interactions. One example is um, protein function. So proteins function based on their shape. For example, hemoglobin runs through the blood and when it interacts with other molecules or different pH zones, it changes the shape of that molecule and it holds oxygen better or worse depending on the environment. Okay, so these intermolecular forces determine the shape, which determines its function. Um, another really big example of why this is important is cooking. So if you can understand how water works, you understand a lot about cooking. Uh, most, you know, most meats contain a lot of water, for example. And if, I, if I'm heating something in an oven, the heat comes from around the meat and it has to start on the outside of the meat. So the outside is the part that is more prone to being overcooked. If I cook slowly, it has time to transmit the heat on the outside slowly into the center of the meat. If I cook on high heat, it's more likely that, I, that I'm going to damage the outside and undercook the inside because there's no time for that heat to make it to the center. Um, we could get more into chemical changes later on. I would suggest reading a book on food science and cooking science. Uh, that's been very beneficial for me, but let's get into some of the more nitty gritty details of the chemistry of <laughs> intermolecular forces. So there are three main strict intermolecular forces, maybe four. The, f the fourth one that I'm going to talk about is um, ionic bonding, which is kind of actually forming a bond, but it's a complete sharing or um, it's a complete transfer of electrons. So instead of like going half and half, this, uh, we could say, um, like sodium chloride or whatever, they're going, they, they're forming these salts and they are one, one molecule is giving away an electron because it doesn't need it. And the other molecule is taking that electron because it does need it. So it's this reciprocal relationship there that forms a, a technical bond, but that bond can be broken when, you know, you put salt in water and then the sodium and the chloride separate. Uh, so ionic bonding, not that big an issue. Let's go to, let's start with the weak ones. So the weakest traditional intermolecular force is London dispersion forces, or you might hear them called van der Waal forces. This comes just from the fact that the, the model that we're working with um, for atoms and for molecules. So if I have an atom in the center or the, the if I have an atom, I have a nucleus in the center, and then all the way around it, I have a bunch of little electrons that are floating around. That's, it's, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, they're, we call it an electron cloud. They, they form this broad area. So most of the actual size of an atom is not from the nucleus, but it's from this cloud of electrons that circle it. And again, I mean, this is a spherical shape, so we can think about it in two dimensions to start learning what's going on, but it is spherical and it's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, so the principle with the London dispersion forces is that these electrons can be kind of coerced into going into one direction if I have another charge. So electrons are negative. If I have a, uh, what's this, opposites attract. So if I have a positive charge over here that comes in and approaches because a nucleus is approaching this nucleus with these electrons all the way around here, it can attract the electrons to be more likely to be around here instead of around this side. So that forms this slight, slight disparity in charge. That's why this one's weakest because it's a little bit less likely to affect um, appreciably. Like it's, it's not like I'm moving these electrons way far away. It's just, you know, it's, it's still within the atom. Um, okay. So intermolecular forces. Now one distinction I want to make here is 
if I have I have this atom, I'm not talking about two atoms coming together and forming bonds. I know we talked about ionic bonds, but those are those are a little bit of a gray area, right? So we're going to move past that. We're not talking about um, let's say we have H2O, right? We have an O and then two H's. We're not talking about how that H connects to that O connects to that H. What we're talking about is how this H2O connects with this H2O. Okay, and we'll get more into that. So the second, again, that's intermolecular forces, not intramolecular forces, not within the same molecule, but between two different molecules. In intra versus inter. Um, second main intermolecular force is dipole dipole forces. So if I have, we could just picture one large molecule that has a, or one large atom that has a lot of electrons on it, and then one small atom that has just a few electrons on it. One example might be um, HCl. Um, hydrochloric acid. It's been a while since I've had chemistry. I think that's what it's called. Um, so Cl, chlorine, is huge and hydrogen is just one little electron floating around there. And so it'll give it to this uh, chlorine atom and it'll share its bond. But the chlorine, since it's so big and has so many uh, electrons in it and this hydrogen since it doesn't need its electron it's going to kind of donate that over to a chlorine atom and so what we're left with is a slightly negative charge on the chlorine and a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen now that's we're, that's all intramolecular that we're talking there the dipole comes because I've induced the dipole intramolecularly. And so if I have another HCl come in, so if I have my, uh, my Cl and my H, then I have my other Cl and H from another molecule, these will want to attract, again, because opposites attract. So that forms this bond, like if you think um, a bunch of little things floating in a, a pond or whatever, those two molecules are going to be um, attracted towards one another. And this becomes really important when we think about, let's go back to water, for example. So if we have H2O, the H's on one molecule want to find the O's on another molecule. This, if these things are attracted to one another, they don't like to separate. Now, if they separate, that means there is a lot of energy there. And if there's a lot of energy, that means there is heat. So that's a very important concept. Um, this, this attraction force is what determines the temperature that water boils at. So we can think about that. We can think about state changes. So if I want to heat up water higher than 100 degrees, I can just put some salt in there for more bonds because now I have more intermolecular forces. I can keep those molecules together so they don't want to boil off. And escape the pan that I'm or the pot that I'm um, heating up and then I can push my 100 degree Celsius boiling temperature to maybe 103 104 105 degrees Celsius boiling temperature I can heat up food a little bit more now you have to understand that you're adding salt in there and so you're changing other processes in the, at the same time but this is just my example for illustrating um, intermolecular forces and increasing boiling point or depressing the freezing point. Um, that's mostly what I want to say about dipole dipole. Now the third intermolecular force is called hydrogen bonding. And that's when a hydrogen atom finds three, one of three specific other atoms, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So, um, I just picture NOF, NOF, um, just something that I, you know, looked over and over and over again, and now I just kind of remember that. Um, similar idea here, but again, if we take an H and an F, we're not talking about the intramolecular, we're not talking about the same molecule, we're talking about one between the other. And so again, we have to start thinking about 
general properties of a solution or of a, a mixture that we're working with, not of just one atom. We're not talking about breaking bonds. These are not strict bond, bonds in the strictest sense. These are interactions between each other. We can start thinking a little bit more about how um, entropy comes into play, how systems kind of evolve and interact with each other. If I start to, let's say I have a pot of boiling water and I put, uh, or I, I have a pot of water and I start to boil it and I have my flame here at the bottom, then we know that it's going to be hotter here at the bottom than it is at the top. But that will start to mix and we have, um, we have gradients, we have temperature gradients there that start to equilibrate things. And if I leave it long enough, it will equil equilibrate again, even if I keep adding heat, right? Um, the, other, the other thing we can think about, if I have really high heat down here to help boil this, once, uh, once a water molecule gets high enough, hot enough, and it hits this bottom area, it's going to evaporate, it's, gonna, it's going to turn gaseous and shoot all the way through. So when I, when I boil water and I start to make steam, it doesn't come from up here, it comes from down here. Just something you might want to think about when you're cooking. Uh, okay, so review, if we have, sorry, we're shaking the camera here. If we have um, three major, let's, we'll say four, we have our ionic bonding, which is a more of an intramolecular kind of bond. Um, and then we have three other main intermolecular forces. We have the London dispersion or van der Waal forces, which are a little bit weaker on the scale. We have our dipole-dipole interactions, which are a little bit stronger. And then we have our hydrogen bonding, which is considered the strongest. And that's when a hydrogen atom from one molecule comes in contact or near contact with a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, and NOF, a NOF from another molecule. Um, and these are important because they can help determine function of amino acids and function of water in the body, which is predominantly made of water. Hopefully that clears some of that up. Uh, if you have more questions, look it up because I think I'm at my capacity, but <laughs> I can help you find some answers if you have them. Um, if you enjoyed this or you found this helpful, feel free to smash that like button down below. And until next time, toodles.